welcome back everybody to the tactical perspective i'm still the crusty old crow this is still my gi joe classified line review series uh and we are still handling the haslab dragonfly or as i've done it the zombie fly figures series uh so this is part two of a four-parter right and so in part two today we are going to be covering uh our good buddy here ripcord not just any ripcord night force ripcord all right we'll just stand him off to the side here uh this comes to us with a lot of excitement after we'd all seen the halo jumper but very different you'll see that in the review it's uh it's its own thing and it's not quite uh I, I'm, I'm not gonna, I think this one was the more disappointing figure in the series, but I'll get that in the review. I'm not disappointed with the figure, but I'm not as impressed with it as I had hoped to have been. But it is number 143 in that size series. There you go. You can connect that to the, uh, the box art of 142 and on and start forming that picture of the Dragonfly's Assault. But number 143, we've got that uh, box art of our good buddy there, Ripcord. And he's just known as Ripcord here. There's no extra naming on here. That naming convention can never get sorted out, it seems, no matter what the package. But we've got our Night Forest logo. Again, that beautiful skyline backliner. I've just folded it back over so we don't have to look at the plastics. And then you've got your portrait, your combat functions, your primary combat functions or icons of what he's qualified. His little cyber story, if you would, the Night Forest forest icon and then of course uh his portrait there all translated again on the back there's your bottom with the the logo for the dragonfly haslab kit and again a little nod to that on the top you'll notice no legal gobbledygook that's all covered in a pamphlet inside the big box of the actual haslab kit itself so we spare ourselves as i mentioned in my good bad and ugly about haslabs when you get figures from a haslab direct you'll notice they aren't taped at the bottom because they are putting them directly into the shipper and into the customer's hands there's no need for security measures such as that so great little boxes nice little series and uh, we'll put that up there. And guys, what we're going to do now is we're going to carry on with uh, the next part of it, which is our tactical perspective review where we do the file card review. Then we're going to jump right into the head-to-toe inspection, give them a play grade, give them a tack grade, give them the je ne sais quoi grade. That's extra something special about them that doesn't fall under play and tack. And then we'll move on to the next character. All right, so uh, if you like these kind of videos, you remember what to do, that like, that share, that subscribe. It really helps the algorithm. It's a free membership. Uh, no membership free subscription and do interact in the comments i love having discussions with you guys i appreciate all the guys that my regulars especially that come back and engage with me on this beautiful subject of the gi joe classified line and the nostalgia that it's hitting with us and the money that it's parting from us and how we feel about that all right guys let's jump over there and have a look at that file card and here we go guys so there you got him number 143 in the classified line the hasbro uh, haslab exclusive rip cord for night force uh the variant there we have him in front of our little base for our zombie fly let's get into the uh the file card for him okay unlike what was written on his box where it's just rip cord uh, our Halo Jumper named Ripcord, remembering Halo stands for high altitude, low opening. His real name is Wallace Weems, Wallace A. Weems to be precise. His military specialty is airborne infantry with a secondary military specialty in demolitions. His birthplace is from Columbus, Ohio. Oh no, I know some people that don't like Ohio. Oh no. Anyways, he's E4, uh, what, what is that, Corporal? Corporal is uh, the American grading there. Uh, anyways, Ripcord joined the Civil Air Patrol in high school, discovered skydiving, and joined the G.I. Joe team so he could jump from much higher altitudes. He's qualified expert M16, M1911 uh, A1 auto pistol, Carl Gustav 9mm Parabellum, and Browning High Power. Let's say you got a trouble spot. You can't sail, walk, or ride in. So you send a plane in so high that it can't be seen or heard. Ripcord jumps and drops like a rock for thousands of feet, then opens his chute at the last possible moment to avoid visual and electronic detection. What he does once he hits the ground, you don't want to hear about. And there you go. You got that file card going in there. It seems like towards the end, they kind of describe them a little bit like snake eyes, eh? You got that cold, hard stare, guys. Uh, right there. Ooh, look at me. I'm Wallace. I'm a mean man. Uh, but there you go. You're all black jumper 
And uh, the, this one, the conversation, we're going to talk a little bit about this backpack. Well, not a little bit. We're going to talk a lot about this and where this figure uh, fell in and how he compares perhaps to something along the lines of uh, maybe that guy, the 60th anniversary Halo jumper that came out. What that brought to the table... Our good buddy Wallace seems to have left that home. But we will talk about some of the cool stuff that he does come with. And uh, we'll do that in our head-to-toe inspection. So let's get into that right away, guys. All right. So for our head-to-toe, you're going to see that you've got a nice face sculpt there. Like I said, his hair slick parted off to the side, just like uh, the box in the background would have you look. Uh, he's very much a man of his portrait there, isn't he? Uh, very good look for him. Uh, the black, uh, so the black is a really cool draw with the green and everything like that, but it almost distracts from it, just how clunky this figure is. So again, you've got the straight cut on the back neck that's going to reduce your looking up. And he's got so much kit that looking down is going to be impossible. It gets even harder once the helmet's on. We'll see that as we go. I'll show you how that helmet assembles. Uh, there's no problem with the butterfly joints on this guy or the... The hip bend swivel, all that other stuff is good to go. It's an actually pretty damn good buck uh, for a flight suit. I just wanted to check where I'd seen that before. Is that the same buck as it looks like it might be? Well, it's definitely using the same legs as Wild Bill, uh, at least, right? Just with a different paint app, right? So Wild Bill and Ripcord have the same legs. But uh, he's got a different top to him, clearly. Uh, it's not the same top, is it? Oh my God, is it really? No. Is it? Did they just do two wild bills here? All right. Yeah, uh, guys, it's two wild bills here. <laughs> so I'm going to check the collar. Yeah, it is. So the entire buck is wild bill there, just painted black as best as I can tell. Now, the head is different. Uh, the wrists are going to be different. And the shoes are going to be different for sure. He doesn't have wild bill's boots. But yes, this is a duplicate of wild bill's buck with a different set of kit on there. Well, Bill, why, you can just stand off to the side and watch that, I guess, because, you know, it's you. Anyways, uh, the rest of the kit on there, like, we'll just really show you the... We'll finish the head-to-toe. I'm just shocked this is still a Wild Bill. There's your Night Force logo. This time it's done in the military, thir like, uh, olive drab green and black as opposed to black and red. Uh, he's got his... Uh, his wrist chronometer on there, or his alt altimeter, or whatever you call it, his drop, I'm going to fall, open, shoot now thing. Uh, pinless elbows, pinless knees, like we said, nice hard pack holster. He does come with a pistol, but it's that crappy Viper pistol. Oh, man, you know what? His whole weapons loadout is just junk, guys. I, I hate to say it, but it's uh, all steel core stuff. Let's get rid of some of the spoilers now. There's his one weapon, and it's just steel core painted green and black. There's another weapon, uh, your standard Viper piece of crap pistol, and uh, more steel core nonsense with suppressors and whatnot. Why this guy is uh, halo jumping in with the with the, all this stuff, I don't know. But it would have been nice to probably have a duffel bag or something to have him attached to. It attaches to nothing, and he ain't jumping with it. You got your your uh, Mad Marauders low light. So, uh, uh, goggles on there for whatever purpose you want those on there it's not like you're going to notice them under his helmet when you get all that on so overall we're uh, we're gonna track down where i slapped his helmet here in a second and we'll show you what that looks like all right so there we have him with his uh with his halo mask on his rebreather right there connected now this assembly system is different than what we saw with the 60th anniversary halo jumper uh we'll just pull one out here uh you can see it's the same helmet and everything's just been repainted uh the visor and everything remains the same but his rebreather apparatus is uh different than rip cords i'm just going to put him in the background so you can kind of spot some of the differences of course the 60th anniversary halo jumper was based off the airborne buck so what we got with uh you know them reprinting wild bill to into a new look for the night forest ripcord the helmet is still the same now uh what i want to draw your attention to is i i'd heard somebody saying that their halo uh sorry ripcord 
his harnesses had snapped. And I don't know if that's necessarily the case, but I will show you where some of that might be perceived as such. Okay, so let's get rid of that crappy steel core gun out of the way for a minute. And let's have a look at this poorly seated backpack. All right, so I've got it flushed in there. You can see that his jump pack is, uh, it's the same design as the 60th anniversary. However, this one was sealed and did not come with a parachute. I could try and pry this open. I'm sure it's meant to come open. But if you have a look, you can see those two. It's, uh, I'll point them out. But I mean, how would you not see that? Those two weak spots right there. So I'm not going to dick around with attaching a parachute to this guy. What I wanted to show you is this buckle system. Well, what the people were saying, uh, they were saying that the, the, this harness breaks because you can do this. You can pull these clean out, right? Oh, no, it's broken. No, it's not. It's uh, it's preventing it from breaking when you rotate uh, the waist and everything like that. And when you try to slip the, the parachute backpack uh, buckles underneath that. Because if you try to put these buckles over these straps, you're going to have a real hard time buckling it up. But if you untuck these, feed your parachute buckle straps through like that after you feed the arms through and... In the back and then just simply re-tuck these in uh that i think was the intended function of this kit so for this box and pardon me i had it all there we'll just squeeze it in it's not hard to squeeze them in there you go and you've got it all looking very serviceable again it's one of two different uh, types of harnesses we're going to see in the four-figure set that came with the Dragonfly. Uh, this is actually something I liked about the, the Ripcord box in its general, like its kit and everything like that. Nothing else about its kit impressed me. The backpack looking weakened already didn't impress me. The helmet just looks cool because black always looks cool. I do like the, uh, the Night Forest Griffin logo on there. Uh, being in its colors, uh, but they're, you know, thematically they're changing things up and going green and green and black where it was red and black before. It's just, it's a different consistency for Night Force, and I'm not sure how I feel about that. I feel like those little blue goggles that he came with uh, that I've now placed off, off to the side somewhere. What a waste. I don't feel like they had any relevance on there. Uh, they're just fancy design for no purpose. Uh, overall, I feel like the only really thing that was cool about the kit, and there you can see he's got a different rebreather hose, which is actually kind of a bitch to, to get seated in there sometimes. Uh, this is only the real change from all of this. Uh, it just, instead of clipping into the pack, it clips onto the side. You can see they later changed that design, and I think it was to put more tension on the hose. I think whatever they learned from ripcord because they made him first I, I hope and they they corrected with the 60th anniversary at least i hope that's what it is because i do feel like the 60th anniversary has the superior parachute um clearly wild bill has the superior buck yeah there's those silly little goggles i was talking about so uh ripcord i think out of the entire line number 143 ripcord probably not my most favorite i feel like he's getting a bit of a bum rap in his design and i'm not probably helping that the way i'm describing my thoughts on him um but aesthetically he's a very cool looking character i just feel like they probably should have done a little bit better with the weapons loadout especially when in the file card they kind of make it elude like he's there to f shit up he's got a secondary in demolitions we see no nothing nothing uh specialist about this guy aside from dropping in with guns hanging off uh you know it just didn't quite capture what i was hoping it was going to capture with that one all right so we're going to go break into the uh the play and the attack and the uh je ne sais quoi grade We'll roll right into play grade here. Okay, let's be clear. Basically, Ripcord is just a different version of the 60th anniversary soldier, which we all saw before we saw the Haslabs. That doesn't mean one became before the other. It's a chicken and the egg situation. Uh, but the play feature for the 60th anniversary was far superior in that, you know, you got a parachute with them for one. Uh, I'm 
not going to give them the same grade as the 60th anniversary for Ripcord. I think as a HasLab, I got to I got to rip on them a little bit. Yeah, as a HasLab tier on lease, this figure should have come with everything that the 60th anniversary figure came with and then some. It's a HasLab. Uh this is a lot of funding going into a pro a dream project and if you're going to have tier on lease uh, characters, they should be the best of the best kind. So whatever I gave the 60th anniversary, having the parachute with the kit, uh, the great helmet that Ripcord does have, and then the Blase Steel Core and Viper weapons, I'm just going to say they did fail to impress. I'm going to go a 2 on the play grade for Ripcord on this one and jump right into that attack grade. Whatever attack grade I gave uh, the 60th anniversary soldier, it really just kind of goes with this one as well, but with the uh, the paint scheme of the Night Force colors uh versus the the camouflage so i think i gave the uh the 60th anniversary at least a four on the tack grade i'll go with the same uh, if it was a four or 4.5 i don't know but i'll give that to ripcord as well even though i think those blue lens goggles are utterly useless but again I got to ding it for being a HasLab. So as much as I gave it a 4 or 4.5, in deep down inside, I want to take away like three whole points for being a HasLab with this this kind of loadout, uh, the, the steel core loadout. It's no fun to play without a parachute. And tactically, I, I, you know, as a HasLab, I'd expect the best of the best weapon, like what we see with Crazy Legs when we get to that review. On the Je ne sais quoi, I'm going to say that they pretty much relied on the Je ne sais quoi factor, the, the Night Force colors and the, the facial sculptors. What really drives this character for me but I find it's entirely banking on the success of the Night Force collection that whoever gets these figures has at the time. As his own, he stands really well with the 60th anniversary, but uh, he is on his own um, with those jumpers. With the Night Force line, he falls in nicely. But the je ne sais quoi part is that I'm really saddened the fact that a HasLab is using two, not one, but two, uh, Wild Bill Bucks and, and selfishly keeping them to the HasLab market and not on the open retail market yet that I can tell. Uh, I, I feel like, uh, you know, <laughs> it's doubling down on the feeling of missing out on this for somebody who doesn't get these figures. So uh, I'll give them the je ne sais quoi factor of a 2.5. This was their lukewarm outing, I think. It's probably the least money invested in the in the four figs that come with the HasLab set, as far as I see it. Yeah, definitely my last place fig. But there you go, guys. Those are your grades for this one. And that is going to do it for today's Tactical Perspective on 143. Ripcord, uh, who came with the HasLab set. 143 in the line. Ripcord, you know, Wallace Weems. Uh, I was really looking forward. I thought he would be one of my more favorite characters in the, the four-figure set that came with the Dragonfly HasLab. Unfortunately, he just kind of sits at the bottom. There's too many little issues with the non-functioning back um, parachute, the, the lackluster kit, the hose assembly on the side being uh, not, the, not the best design. Uh, overall, though, you know, aesthetically, very pleasing figure. He looks badass. He does really look cool with the other Night Force, but that's kind of easy to do. I feel like the 60th anniversary, even though it's not a, a wild bill buck like the, his is, uh, using the airborne buck, you know, it switched things up. They look good together, but his kit was superior in almost every way, uh, which surprised me considering this is a HasLab. Uh, but, you know, you know that when they do the ripcord for the main line, a non, just a regular ripcord, not Night Force, or even a retro, these problems won't uh, won't be back, and I'm assured of that. I won't see a Viper pistol, I won't see steel core weapons, and I won't see weak parachutes. I have to believe that. All right, guys, so that's going to be it for this tactical perspective. Don't forget to watch the next one, which is going to be 144, which is our good friend, Jane Mulligan, uh, or sorry, yeah, Jane Mulligan, also known as Glenda, uh, from the Spanish G.I. Joe universe and the Commandos Heroics. All right, see you there. Bye.
sing, to sing and feel the fog It starts to cross, it goes I'm pretty up behind crowds You are again different of money You are foreign to a bottle You are again different of money You are foreign nurses to keep it clear You are again different of money You are foreign to a bottle You 